You guys saw such a polished version of me yeah. online, a version of me that you did not see like my sadness and my loneliness and my depression mm -hmm. in my room and like mm -hmm. all, like you didn't see even half of it. It's been dating like now. <laughs> Are you dating or do you have a boyfriend or <laughs> oh, has that giggling. transition? It's probably red flag too. Like if he's making you feel like, gosh, am I crazy? Am mm -hmm. I this? Am I that? Totally. That's not a good side. So. What, do, what do people say? Like what's the biggest hateful thing you see constantly? Oh, that I'm Delulu. What is up, happy and healthy? Welcome back to the podcast. It's your girl, Janine Amapola Ward, and welcome back to another episode of Happy and Healthy. Today's episode is going to be a good one. I'm super excited for you guys to listen to today's episode and hear our amazing guest, Ali Yost, on the podcast. But before we get into that, I want to do some updates because you guys, today is an exciting, amazing day. My book comes out today. Ah! Oh! <laughs> I'm so excited, you guys. My book, Becoming Happy and Healthy, is officially out today. Today is March 26th, and I hope you guys will check it out. If you have not ordered it already, what are you doing? I'm just kidding. I won't be mean, but you guys, I have worked so hard on this book. It is finally out now available for purchase at Target, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, pretty much anywhere that books are sold, you guys. And truly, I just put my heart and my soul into this book. I share so many different stories in here. And if you have ordered it already, please let me know. If not, I know maybe some of you guys are like, no, I'm going to wait and see. I really think this book is going to bless you guys. As I've mentioned before, there are 14 chapters in here and I'm going to read to you guys every single chapter so you can understand what the chapters are like but you guys I really believe this book is going to help you I get very vulnerable and honest and real and I share all my stuff in this book in hopes that it will help you so we have chapter on faith expectations contentment friendships dating confidence habits career decisions secrets set apart wellness adventure satisfaction. And so I go in depth, obviously in each chapter about all these topics. And I really, really believe this is going to bless you. Also, I have a foreword in my book from my own best friend, Madison Pruitt Trout. She literally wrote that for me because she knows me. She saw me overcome these things. She saw me live it out. And so maybe you're like wondering like, why, why do I need this book? Who is this book for? This book is for anyone really trying to better their life because it's not just one niche topic. It's helping you thrive in all aspects of life like I talk about in this book. So we talk about wellness, we talk about habits, we talk about dating, friendships, uh, career, how to hear the voice of God, how to make decisions, how to go on adventures. And I share my story and I give you journal prompts. It's very interactive. There's things for you guys to do. There's um, things you can take away. There's music playlists, there's devotionals, there's challenges in the book for you guys to do. And so I really believe in this book so so much. And I hope you guys do too. And it's really going to overall help you, um, overcome some things in your life because you guys, when you, you would not believe the amount of DMS I get with these questions. I compiled all the questions that you guys asked me, all the advice, the things that you guys asked me for into one book. And I really believe this book is going to help you guys find freedom, find solutions, and give you a practical guide with biblical backed up advice to help you guys thrive and succeed and become happy and healthy. So I'll stop talking now. It's available now for purchase. So go check the link out down below. Let me if you've ordered, let me know if you've ordered it already or if you're going to order it. And I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts. I really pray this book blesses you. So go check it out now. I'm so excited. It is finally here. And also you guys, I'm really excited about today's episode because we bring on Ali Yost. She is a very popular TikToker. She's crushing it. She recently had a pretty crazy transformation with the Lord. So now she talks a lot about Jesus on her own pod podcast, um, Christ with Coffee. She is very successful on TikTok. And honestly, we just get into it. She is so funny and real in this episode. And I really just think you guys are going to love this topic because we ask her about her faith journey. How does she maintain her faith offline and online. And I, she has some hot takes too. She just gets into it, you guys. So I really think this episode is going to be fun. And I think you guys should check her out. If you have not listened to Alios already, then you definitely should. And we get into it. This was honestly 
when Caleb and I were done filming this episode, we were like, whoa, that was one of our most favorite episodes. And we went to Nashville and we loved, loved Nashville. So we have more in-person podcasts coming soon. We realize that this is definitely the route that we want to go more in person. It's just so much more fun. So we have Josh and Savannah coming up. We have Lisa Brevere. We have Ali Yost. We have Josh Broom coming on. We have some awesome people coming up. So stay tuned, Maddie Pruitt. Um, and so it's been a blast making this podcast. So if you guys enjoyed today's episode, let me know. I'll stop rambling now and let's just get into today's episode with Ali Yost. Okay, what is up, happy and healthy? Welcome back to another episode. We are currently in Nashville, me and my lovely husband. Actually, you told me not to call you lovely. Lovely my is. My sexy masculine husband, <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Ward. And we are also here today with Miss Allie Yost. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I, I love to me. be very expressive. I clap a lot. I don't know why I'm like oh, that. Oh, we're going to be like arms moving. Oh, yeah. Like, that's I'm going to hit this microphone for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, we're in Nashville, and I was like, man, we got to get some people on the pod, and you just moved here, yeah. which is so exciting. Yeah, it's so exciting. How's it been so far? It's been such a blessing. It's crazy because, like, I've only been here for a few months, but it feels like I've been here forever with mm. just how busy the Lord has kept my life in mm -hmm. such a fun way. So... Um, yeah, it's been awesome. I feel awful that it's been so gloomy for y'all, though. It's like That's so rainy okay. and it's kind of getting Listen, cozy, though. We just yeah. had a full on debate in our last podcast of why Texas is still superior okay. to Nashville. <laughs> so I have this like B. What is it? My problem with your city is the potholes here. Are, awful. are deeper than bigger than my future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, genuinely. Wow, like, well, that's saying a lot. It's like, <laughs> bigger than my future, and that's us because the Lord's got a great the, future. <laughs> yes, it's she's, deep. She's like, here I, ho I hope so. What? Yeah. I hope I have a good future, but we got to fix this. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be convinced to move here. The pothole situation. Babe, is Dallas's tough. roads are the you can dodge them. Worse though. I think Dallas yeah. has some of the worst roads because our soil moves yeah. so much. But so. that's why y'all got potholes. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah, horrible. I mean, I've been to Dallas, but I'm not really looking at yeah. the. I don't know. See, uh, yeah, you're, you're getting magnifying glass, just staring at the like, road. I'm not like, how many <laughs> potholes have I seen? But <laughs> this is why we brought Ali on is to talk about the current state and the complexities of potholes in Nashville. Yeah, so we're not yeah. going to touch on anything <laughs> Jesus based. No, we're not talking about our, don't, I don't want to talk about myself. We need to talk about potholes. Yes, Come that's on. where we're here. That's where we're going to name the so title of this. But you're you're crushing it. Every time I open. TikTok, you're there. there. That's the Lord, y'all. That there. ain't even me. My algorithm yeah. is throwing me your content. Every <laughs> so, yeah, you That's have awesome. 1.9 million followers. Do you, yeah. do you realize what 1.9 million is? Like, I try not to. Imagine try to look, that. You're yeah. in a stadium. No, no. If I do it, I'll freak out. And they're all going, yeah, no. and they're laser beamed on you. No way. Does that freak you out? <laughs> no, because I just, I just, what is it? What are these? Tunnel vision. Blinders. <laughs> Blinders. Blinders. Yeah, no. How? I just look at Jesus. I don't. But it is, I'm not saying I'm not, like, aware. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. awesome, and it's so cool the way he's using me and impacting so many people. But yeah. if I start closing my eyes and visualizing 1.9 million people, I'd probably start sweating profusely. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> For yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a blessing. How long has it taken you to get to that point? Like, when did you start social media to where you are now? Yeah. So, um, well, technically, I started social media like 10 years ago. Oh. Um, I popped off for a season on Vine. We remember Vine girl. Vine. I was a Vine girl. I had like 200K on Vine on accident. I was like Let's a 19 go. year old sitting in my car procrastinating going to class. I went to community college in upstate New York. And so I just remember uh, sitting in my car and uh, eating some McDonald's French fries, and I'd just be shooting it. I was just telling jokes. It was we say shooting the sheesh. Shootin that's, what we, that's what we say here, shooting the sheesh. Shooting the sheesh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really close. That was, <laughs> I'd probably accidentally. Uh, um, VC days would come out. Yeah, VC, yeah, yeah, I'd shoot be like, sister. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I had a season uh, during Vine, which was mostly just comedy. I would sing sometimes, but Ooh. a lot of like my personality. Um, and then obviously Vine passed away, RIP. And <sighs> then um, with Vine, I still gained a bit of a following like on Instagram and uh, YouTube. And I was doing like makeup tutorials. I had a real big passion for makeup. I still do. I still love. I mean, makeup. your makeup always is a slay. Thank Every you time. so much. I'm like, do a tutorial. Thank you. I know. I like <laughs> drop the link. Have to. I'm too busy talking about Jesus. I'm like, I, I should talk about. It. Maybe I can do it at the same time. Or, yes, everyone does that. Gospel and you. That's what I you. do. Makeup and ministry. Stop it right now. <laughs> you can make, figure out your own gospel and um, glam. Yeah. <gasps> 
that's it. Glam. I got it for you. Listen, I'm just going to leave you two alone. Let anyway, you guys... we're talking about makeup. <laughs> gospel and glam. Wait, stop. That's genius. Um, so anyway, so uh, yeah. And then I just got into makeup artistry. I was doing that full time. And so then fast forward to 2020 um, when the pandemic hit and I didn't have a job anymore. So um, I was mainly doing a lot of wedding makeup. Um, mm. So obviously a lot of weddings weren't happening and stuff. So I uh, heard about this app called TikTok that obviously everyone was obsessing with and like mm -hmm. on. And I like, I literally, I kind of acted like I was too good for it, but I was like, I am not. Same. Seriously, <laughs> I was like, I'm not getting TikTok. Yeah. I'm not doing it. I don't need another app to be addicted to. Like, I'm good. And then one night, I think at like 3 a.m. on a Wednesday, I was awake for no reason. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll just see what this is about. Dude, yeah. That and was I, so me. Yeah, it was always during the pandemic because everyone was bored. And what are like, we going to do with our time? What am I going to do? And it was like, no, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. And then one day, your finger just somehow just pushed the button. That would have been actually a really good time to become obsessed with the Lord. Yeah. Like we had so much time on our well, hands actually, like that. That's when I became obsessed with the Lord. I wow. read the Bible that whole year, and yeah. I fell in love with Jesus. So. I bet that happened for a lot of people. Because mm -hmm. it's like, if you're stuck in your house, it's like, what else are you going to do? I guess I'll open my Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I did that. But anyway, I went to TikTok and uh, I was committed to just being a consumer. I was like, I'm not going to like make videos or anything. Mm -hmm. But also that season of like Vine Alley had always stayed in the back of my head where I was like, I wonder if I'm not just like a one hit wonder. Like I literally thought that, t uh, what was it, Vine was the epitome of my existence online. Like I just, I wasn't mm -hmm. gaining followers on any of my other platforms. So I was like, okay, I guess that was it. It's fine, God. Like I'll be a makeup artist. I love this too, you know? And so uh, I don't know what shifted, but I was like, I think I was just like, let's just see. Like, let's just try it, right? So it started off with comedy. I was literally just making fun of myself, past relationships. <laughs> there was some bitterness in that. It's okay, the Lord's healed me from that. But at the time, it was a lot of like making fun of myself and like relationships and boy drama and like whatever. But it's relatable, right? Oh, yeah. Been so, that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So after like two or three months, I ended up going stupid viral, getting a ton of traction. And then, um, my content had really shifted to wanting to pour into people because I've always had such a heart for like loving people, especially women. Like I've had such a passion for encouraging women, you know, um, in their confidence and their self-worth and all of that. So um, I was kind of going through a breakup and a hard time during that season myself. And so I was like, what better way to like mutually, you know, also help people through this than to get online and, and encourage people. So I started my little series called Hey Girly Pop, where mm -hmm. I would just literally speak directly to the phone and I'd be like, hey Girly Pop, you're gonna get through this, I love you. You it know what I mean? It was the cutest thing. It I was awesome. That. It was yeah. so cute. So, uh, so that was the moment that my social media started to totally explode. And I think I, I surpassed a million followers in like under a year. It had to have been like nine yeah. months or so. Which was insane. And so also, just to give clarity as to like where my relationship was with the Lord, I was super lukewarm. I had grown up Christian, and my parents had always told me about Jesus. And we prayed at dinner, and we went to church like on the holidays and stuff, mm -hmm. but um, I didn't really know him. Like I didn't know anything further than Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and I don't even think I really fully understood what that meant. I did not know the gospel. I never really tried to open my Bible. But I would pray to him and touch base with him every few months you know mm -hmm. I, would, I would literally probably pray to him like once every two months which is ridiculous i can't even imagine going like 20 minutes without praying <laughs> to the lord now um but anyway so that's where my relationship was at at that time this episode is brought to you by better help now i'm sure you guys have heard of better help but i want to reiterate just how important taking care of your mental health is and speaking to a professional to help you with the things that you are struggling with now, I know a lot of us could really use an extra time in our day. We could use it to go for a run or take a nap or show up for a friend. But I really feel like if we had more time, I'm just wondering, what if we use that to really work on ourselves, to meet with someone for an hour in a day to really help them dive deep into maybe what you're struggling with? I know for me, I have benefited from therapy in the past, and it's definitely something I would completely consider doing down the road if I were ever to struggle again. And I have found freedom from therapy before marriage. I did it. And even in my past, I just think it is so beneficial. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It is entirely online de uh, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. So you just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with better help visit betterhelp.com slash happy healthy today to get 10 percent off your first month that's better help h-e-l-p.com slash happy healthy time 
Um, and then I kept doing these series. I'm going full time with social media. It was really exciting. I had another podcast that I had started. Um, my very first podcast I started, because I have a different one now, mm -hmm. called Girly Popcast. And essentially, I got to the decision of having Girly Popcast because my followers were in my comment section on TikTok being like, we need more. And at the time, we could only upload like a minute video on TikTok. And so I was like, I don't know, like we could be bringing these topics to an actual podcast and talk for much longer, you know, like 40 minutes, an hour, whatever. And so I started my podcast and it was really rewarding um, in the beginning. But I feel like I started to, as we all do, when we're trying to do things from our own power, I was getting so depleted. Like mm. I was pouring so much into people from my own just understanding and self um, that I started to get, yeah, just like suck dry, right? Um, and uh, there were other things that were happening in my life just regarding relationships and friendships that were just crumbling. And I, I just got to a really like low place. I got mm. really sad. Um, all the things that I was trying in the world that I thought would help me just wasn't. And so um, this had to have been the year of like 2022. And so I also had decided that I knew I wanted to move to Los Angeles. So I was like, I wanna move to LA. And I knew that I also was like struggling internally with just all of these things and uh, just feeling a lot of loneliness too. And like not really, it's, my family has always been so supportive and incredible, but like, you know, it's different when you're like grown and you mm -hmm. don't feel like you have a community outside your family. And I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina at this time. So I wasn't oh, in New York with my there? family. Um, so my family and I decided to move down to North Carolina all together. Okay. Uh, and so, um, that, and I lived there for like seven years. So another part of my frustration was I was like, God, I have literally been in the city for seven years. Why do I still feel like mm. I don't have like a solid community of people? Um, and I just feel like so many of us relate to this feeling where it's like you just want like one ride or die bestie. Yeah. And I, I didn't feel like I even had that, you know? So anyway, it was just all these things collectively making me feel real sad. And uh, I decided I wanted to move to LA. And at the same time that I made that decision to move to LA, my parents decided they wanted to go back to New York. And I was like, well, I'm definitely not going mm. back to New York. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. But I said, you know, this is gonna be the biggest move of my life. I'm gonna have to lean on something. And I said, I've never tried to take God seriously in my life. So maybe this is the time to do that. Like I literally felt him whispering me, whispering to me. I think I thought it was like my internal thoughts, but it was him being like, hey, you've never tried to take me seriously ever, you know? So, um, so anyway, so January 1st, I also was like New Year's resolution because I was moving to LA in January as well. Perfect opportunity. Of 2021? Of 2000 and into the year of 2023. Gotcha. So 2022 is when I was like sad girl era and then we're going into 2023 and I was like, all right, fresh start. So I go to Barnes and Noble and I get my Bible and uh, I started reading it a couple weeks before I moved to LA in January. It was like mid January that I mm -hmm. went to LA. And uh, yeah, and then my life just changed. Literally, I mean, I say this in every everything. Uh, whenever anyone's like, how do I start my relationship with the Lord or how do I get out of be mm -hmm. lukewarm or whatever and I'm like bro the word it will literally change your life oh they gosh, call it yes. like living and alive for a reason you know so uh that was the huge pivotal moment for me was just actually prioritizing my bible and it was crazy because I wasn't even prioritizing it every day I wasn't even really prioritizing it like uh, maybe like a couple times a week you mm -hmm. know what I mean so it was crazy that just even that small amount of time in the word was literally transforming my heart um and so, yeah, so then basically my whole season of me living out in L.A., I was, uh, I was, it was just me and Jesus in my kitchen, and it was so intimate and amazing, and I, it's, like, looking back on it, I'm like, ah, oh, it was just, like, so wow. innocent, and uh, I still feel like I'm in that, like, uh, season of just, like, childlike love, like, oh. first, I just, like I just honeymoon. love my Jesus, yeah, I I'm still that. in it, so I oh hope I never leave it, but. I'll say, I hope you never lose that. No, it ever. It really is the yeah. best feeling. Yeah. So this is, like. This is like new, new for you. Yeah, I've only like, been saved for a little over a year, like yeah. a year and three months. And I think it's really cool, though, because people got to watch your story and your testimony, that transformation. They got to see you go from who you were, what you were posting before to this radical transformation online. Yeah. And then they're like, OK, wait a minute. Yeah. When, what happened here? What's the shift? And I think it's so cool that they got to come on the journey and see this is why reading the Bible is so important. Yeah. I think my followers went through the same thing. It's actually funny. My story is pretty similar. I was alone. I was in my one bedroom apartment by myself reading the Bible during the pandemic. And I just was like, I'm going to finally read the Bible. And yeah. it changed my 
life yeah what was like the it book? doesn't matter how much worship music you listen yeah. to like how many sermons you listen to how many quotes you see on your instagram that may be scripture pastors. influencers like all of that is good but that is not yeah. like you need the word those are supplementary god's the bible should be always the main source where yeah. we get all of that from none of that should substitute yes. being in the bible well, oh go ahead no i was gonna say so what was so you moved to california you accept Jesus. Yeah. Tell us about like the first like temptation you had. You you know, you're a week, two weeks into your journey, you get a text or you going yeah. out with friends. Mm -hmm. Did your friendships change? Like what was yeah. that like? Yeah. Following Jesus and then being surrounded by so much temptation in California. Yeah, because in LA, right? Mm -hmm. I know the irony of me finding Jesus in LA is just so cool. Same. Yeah. Yeah. I um, my parents did not want me to go. They were like, you're gonna They lose were your nervous life. for me too. They were like they were legitimately praying for me. They oh, were like, yeah. we just don't want you to be influenced. My dad Bless my his heart. Too. He's like he's <laughs> he was a cop actually for 25 years. So like the majority of my life, my dad was like super like he's seen the worst of the worst, right? Yeah. Which probably would definitely you know bleed into his worry for his daughters and his children. But um, <laughs> yeah, he's always like, don't get into all that stuff. I'm like, Dad, I'm good, you know. Um, so yeah, the irony, right? But I would say that 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 was like so gradual. Uh, my sin did spill into the beginning of, of yeah. my season mm -hmm. with Jesus, right? I mean, I just, I can't help but think of that visual where you take like dirty water. I'm sure we've seen this online because I've seen pe so many people do it of just how the Lord cleanses us because it's gradual. It's never like he just dumps out the dirty water and fills it with clean. It's like he slowly like clears it out. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, it was funny because, and it's it's makes me giggle because it's just like the innocence of me not really understanding what I was doing with sin, but like, you know, I was still going out and I was drinking and stuff and I was like partying a little bit because um, that type of conviction didn't come um, right away for me. But it was very gradual where I started to realize that I wasn't even relating to like the friends and the going out and stuff. And I just I literally just felt him, him slowly changing my heart. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really over time, like like just like a mm -hmm. moment where I was like, oh, I don't want to do that stuff anymore. It was like. I slowly was feeling that conviction and after doing it, I was like, Ooh, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. I think it's really interesting because oftentimes you'll meet people and they'll want to change you or want to be like, can't you just get it? Like you're in sin or the party's not good for you. The smoking or the boys, like they're not good for you, but everyone has to go on that journey yeah. of their convictions. For me, it was like slowly, but surely modesty started to change and the way I was speaking, I would cuss before I listened to certain music and yeah you go on this journey with the Lord and he convicts you and calls yeah. you higher. Yeah. And the Bible says that the love of the father is what, what brings men to repentance. And yeah. so I was trying to encourage people, the more time you spend with God, like he'll do it. He will. And you, but you have to bless pace. him yeah. and be, listen to him and be willing to listen and say, okay, God, you're right. Yeah. I need some cleaning up to do. And the beginning too was kind of hard for me because I was gaining all of these new followers that were Christian and maybe they'd been in it for a while. And granted, there were a lot of people that would stand up for me and be like, y'all, give her some grace. She's only been in this for two minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. But there were people who were like, you shouldn't dress like that. Yeah. But modesty, like, wasn't even a thing that really came to me super soon in my journey either. Like, I didn't know that the way that I was dressing was, like, mm -hmm. not glorifying God, right? It's like, so I think, um, yeah, like, I'm just grateful that the Lord really got me through that season. Like, I felt his grace through that. And I, again, I've always had the support of my family, too, and my parents. So even being able to go to them and being like, hey, I'm having people attack me in this way and the next. And they're like, well, that's not how Jesus tells us to love people, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm also grateful for, like, that kind of foundation I had with my parents, too, where they were always able to, like, pour into me and kind of be my mentors in that way for the beginning of my season because that stuff was really hard, like, part, like for real. I'm just going to say it. There are pockets of Christianity that's extremely tough. tough. Yeah. yeah, and toxic, you know? So, and for me to be as vulnerable as I was bringing it online, and the only reason I ever brought Jesus online was just because I couldn't help it. I was really mm -hmm. like, I cannot mm. not talk about his totally. goodness. So even that transition was really scary for me because I was like, God, I have had all these people and I gained all of these followers not from you, right? Like, well, it was from him, but like not off of Jesus content. So yeah. that was scary. I'm like, it's giving controversial. It's giving, ugh. and yeah. then I feel like, I think even in the beginning, I was more like, Hey, listen, whatever you believe in, if you believe in Jesus, the universe, yeah, you whatever it is, you do you. But this is what's working for me. And I almost love that that was my approach in the beginning yeah. because I was like, I didn't want to step on. I don't care to step on people's toes now. The Lord has given me like yeah. that boldness. I feel like he's grown me in that so much in this past year. But in the beginning, it was scary. So oh, I was yeah. like, I kind of was tiptoeing. 
but it, it still wasn't stopping me from like talking about his goodness you know yeah. so. what, do, what do people say like what's the biggest hateful thing you see constantly Oh, that I'm Delulu. I don't know that I'm delirious, what? that my sky daddy don't exist. I don't know that people are oh, like, yeah. bless your heart. It's giving very like, bless your heart. You know yeah. what I mean? Are people mad that you've changed? Um, Yeah, there are some people that have made comments that are like, I miss the old you. And I'm like, I don't. Uh, yeah, you're like, I miss not, the old you know what? Kanye. I'm like, I don't, I don't. <laughs> because so you guys saw such a polished version of me yeah. online, a version of me that you did not see like my sadness and my loneliness and my depression mm-hmm. in my room and like mm-hmm. all like you didn't see even half of it everybody is unique and i feel like our healthcare should be too i don't know if you're like me but i kind of dread going to the doctor because it doesn't feel personalized it doesn't feel like they really know me or care i feel like kind of just a number and so maybe you're like me and you kind of dread it and i really started to question this and really started to think are there better alternatives out there and i started looking for more personalized healthcare experiences and that is why i'm really excited because i am working with wild health and i'm super excited to introduce you to the sponsor because they are are founded by two emergency room physicians and Wild Health takes a proactive and preventative approach to healthcare called precision medicine. So they literally take your genetics, your biometrics and lifestyle data to help you determine what your body needs as far as nutrition, exercise, sleep, supplements, and more. So you can function at your best now and in the long run. Y'all, this podcast is happy and healthy for a reason because I want you guys to be healthy. And so I really think you guys are going to love this. Now, do you guys want to hear something crazy? Wild Health can determine if you have elevated levels that can contribute to a wide range of current or potential issues from brain fog to drowsiness during your workday or to microbiome and gut health issues to indicators for diabetes or pre-diabetes. Once identified, 89% of Wild Health patients showed improvement with these challenges. So this is the kind of information you guys will get from Wild Health. I really want you guys to check this out. I just got my sample in the mail. I'm about to send it all in and get my results back. I cannot wait to share with you guys what I learned. I'm very curious and I'm very fascinated by the body and what is going on in my body. And so I'm really excited to learn about what I'm going to get back. And I really think it's just amazing because you'll you'll be able to kind of really diagnose specifically for you what you need from these amazing board certified precision medicine physicians. So it is fully virtual via telemedicine available to everyone in the US. If you guys want to check this out, it's going to be amazing. Um, Wild Health is generously extending a happy and healthy listener code. It is 20% off the cost of membership with the code healthy. So head over to wildhealth.com slash healthy and use code healthy at checkout. Make this commitment to yourself and starting to take control of your health today at wildhealth.com slash healthy healthy i really think this is gonna bless you guys check it out so to say that you miss the old me is kind of like you have you have no idea who the old me really was though like you have this like version of me in your head that you thought i was but i'm telling you right now this version of me is so much better than the version of who i was before you know oh my gosh totally and it's weird because it's like we can only show them so much. And so they don't know they see like 3%. the crying or coming home hungover or the the regret or like, why did or I do the that? Thoughts. The like thoughts. The negative, the, awful thoughts. The way thoughts. you hate yourself. And yep. it's so true. Like I've, I lost a lot of followers when I shifted my content yep. and people being like, oh, she's talking about God now. And it's so hard to not talk about it. You're like, I'm sorry, but that's like where my joy I comes from I have the answer. Now. Like yeah. I have the solution. I'm not going to not share this, right. but it's really tough. Like you can take it or going leave it. online and facing the negativity or the comments or the feedback. Um, but it is, it is really, really tough. Yeah, it is. And I feel like for the beginning of my like transition into sharing about Jesus was, yeah, I was losing like 20,000 followers a week mm-hmm. pretty much. Uh, that I, I'm seeing that number slowly go down because I feel like obviously the Lord is just like, you know, um, filtering out like all the people who wouldn't have been there to support. But actually Mm -hmm. on the flip side though, I've seen more of this is I have so many followers who are like, I have actually been following you since 
before your transition, right? Since Vine, whatever, mm. right? And they're like, it is incredible to see what God is doing in your life. It's boosted my faith. It's made me curious about the Lord. Or if there were people who were following me before that were lukewarm, it's convicted them to get, you know, mm -hmm. closer with God and like have like a real intimate relationship with him. So if anything, it's like, sure yeah the negative comments like there just are going to be people that are like oh we lost another one and i'm like mm. lost man i'm i'm found like right. i don't know what you're Amen. talking about lost hey and jesus says lose your life to gain it for so, real oh yeah bye so i <laughs> hope it's lost actually you know i will say that what i think is interesting is when you because i'm not exactly sure what you were posting before like were you yeah letting people know like hey i'm partying like were you showing that lifestyle okay because oh, yeah. i never here was my problem is i never showed that i was proclaiming christianity and i was getting blackout drunk doing god knows what just being yeah. not a good person and then i'd be like i love jesus so like no wow. one really <laughs> knew what i was doing but i almost feel like when you're publicly showing that and then you change and you have this transformation they almost get convicted and they're like oh like huh. if she stops drinking does that mean i have to stop drinking right. and they're not ready to be on their transformation yet yeah and so you kind of inadvertently convict them even though you're like whoa i'm not like i want you to be on your own journey with the lord i'm encouraging you there's a better way yeah but i almost feel like it kind of calls out people's sin or mm -hmm. calls out things in them that they're like i'm not ready for change yet so mm -hmm. and i love this creator do i have to change now and i think it's kind of this weird thing for people when they see yeah. their favorite influencers change publicly yeah well i think before like i don't know if anyone knew that i was christian before mm -hmm. so i think that's what make it different uh, that's what makes our stories a little different was like mm -hmm. i had no shame to show that stuff because I really wasn't Christian. Mm. If I'm being honest, like I wasn't Christian. I would talk to Jesus from time to time, but I didn't know him. Like I was so like the lukewarm of the lukewarm. And I never spoke publicly that I even never talked to Jesus. You mm. know what I mean? So I think it was just like, people just didn't know that I was Christian. So I mean, and I really wasn't. So it's like, I was just living my life like every other worldly person online. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to parties, I was drinking, I was, uh, I used to go on TikTok Live like all the time and uh, we made this habit where we I would like have my dinner and we'd have our glass of wine and I'd just be like drinking like low-key getting yeah. tipsy on freaking TikTok Live. And I'm like, it's just, it's crazy because uh, yeah, I'm just so different. And I never would have thought that, the thing is, is like when I went into this with Jesus, it was out of desperation, save my life, I need you. It wasn't like, fix my partying, God, help me become more modest, like help me drink less wine, Jesus. Like it was nothing about that. And it's just really cool that, he he doesn't even really show you all of the fruit that you're gonna oh, get yeah. from the beginning it literally was just desperation for me in the beginning and then he was like and by the way this is why this is also a problem get rid of mm -hmm. this you know yeah so, i feel like it's like he's he says come to me and he's like we'll worry about that he's stuff. so gentle like, I'm about not it telling you come and let me fix all your problems like that would be overwhelming come too. to me if he told it, me all the things that yes. i was doing wrong and all of my brokenness i would have been like I'm good. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go back to it now because that sounds like a lot of work. You know yeah, what I mean? Totally. Did you have a question? Or no, I have one? keep going. Okay, so before you knew God, you looked very different. Yeah, I guess you I had, did. I was because I was so looking at your you bring TikTok. that up because I don't really like think well, about that. I was obviously trying to like be like, okay, let me do a little bit more research. And you had, no, not, none of it's bad. It was no. just you looked very different. You yeah. had pink hair yeah. and you had darker makeup. Yeah. And so... What is that transformation? Because usually it's the inward change that now reflects on the outward. Yeah. How has your appearance changed and clothing changed as you've gone to know God? So it's funny because like when you brought that up before we started recording, <laughs> I was like, gosh, I guess my appearance is different. And I feel like that's another way that the Lord just transforms you. And you just you just turn around one day and you're mm -hmm. like, whoa, like it's mm -hmm. not like I'm actively like I need to stop wearing like so much makeup. I need to stop wearing that. It's just like he just does it. Mm -hmm. But um, I uh obviously I was a makeup artist so I had such a passion for makeup and I still do but I feel like if I was if I'm being honest with the version of myself in the past I feel like the reason that I I wanted to wear so much makeup and I just wanted to show up for people I just wanted to be accepted I literally was like I just want to be on the hottest trends when it comes to makeup I want to I want people to like accept me and love me and so with that means we're gonna do all the epic like glamorous makeup which there's nothing I mean, wrong with lame. that I could still <laughs> do it now yeah but um it was I was finding my worth in that you know what I mean I was finding worth in my appearance not in a place of vanity but like I I thought that that's what where you could get your value from i don't know i i you when you don't know jesus you do really kind of focus more on the outside in the way that you look to people in the way that you're presented and so um i think even with me being in the spotlight of like tiktok and stuff it's very easy to like fall into that but uh i just i just 
I care less about the way that I look on the outside. Not like I'm just showing up everywhere like I haven't showered, but yeah. it's just like <laughs> I just feel so worthy already that like I just do less when it comes to the outside. Mm -hmm. And I get so many more compliments now for the inward glow and like the radiance that the Lord gives me. And it just it just is on the outside. Mm -hmm. You know I what that. I mean? Absolutely. So. I mean, I might have pink hair again in my life. Hey, I don't think so, it. actually. But it's like, yeah. it's just, I don't know. He's just transformed me from the inside. And obviously, it really has, like, reflected on the outside. And I feel like I just got to do less. I don't even want. Do I don't less, even God want. bless. Like, for real. <laughs> I mean, it and is. And it's peaceful, by yeah. the way, to yeah. do less. It's like, wow, God is good. I'm not to care as much. <laughs> Are you kidding? It's a way less heavier weight to carry. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's a, she was asking me the other day, like, what do guys look for in girls? And for me, like what attracted me to Janine was just that inner confidence. And it mm. wasn't, she had didn't have to like prove herself in any way. And right. that internal, spiritual, Jesus is first. It just, it, it glows it off of you. And yeah. you can, guys can sense it. Mm. Yeah, that's good. It's so true though. Like I feel like you just glow differently when yeah. you spend time with the Lord. And you're just like, I'm so sick and done of chasing affirmation and all yeah, these things online because I did the same thing. I would post and I'd get so discouraged if not enough people liked it or commented or said I was pretty. Like, did I, was I ugly? Did I not make better my makeup good enough? It's just, it's yeah, sad. It's so. so real and I felt that too. And I think that, um, I think it's important to realize too that when you are so fixated on outward appearance, <clears throat> you're probably also going to attract people who only care about that. Mm -hmm. So like kind of what you're saying where it's like, because the Lord has shifted my heart where I really truly just care about my relationship with him and how he pours into me and changes my heart, um, I've attracted people who who prioritize that first as well. Yeah. It's like, I think that that's why I've had such fruitful relationships in my life and my relationships are so different than the relationships I had before where I was like, God, what the heck? I don't have anyone that's like truly like a legitimate, incredible friend or partner or whatever. It's like, because I was, I was, I needed to be fixed in what my priorities were at. And um, once God did that, I feel like it just attracted people who are also like that, where it's just like, mm. they just care about what's inside, you know? Yeah. That's so real. Yeah. What's been dating like now? Are you <laughs> dating or do you have a boyfriend or <laughs> oh, has that giggling. transition? No, there's been now. no dating. Am I? I, I put blush on I today. don't know if I believe you. No, you're making it you're... good today. <laughs> um, I'll be honest. I've been very impressed with the men who love Jesus. D d different Ooh. than any men that I've met in my life. So... I'll say that since being in this community, I've just been impressed with everyone, men and women. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you guys are, like, incredible. It's just been so refreshing to meet people, um, and it's only because of Jesus, you know. But, uh, no, I haven't been dating. I haven't gone on a date. When was the last time you went on a date? Uh, She's like, yesterday? B.C. No, stop it right <laughs> now. <laughs> B.C. Alley. Really? really? Not one date? No. Really? I don't know. How do you the feel The Lord that? has me hidden. Good for you. Yeah, because you know, I think a lot of girls would be like, "Man, no guy is pursuing me in a year. I haven't been on a date in a year." But you sound pretty confident in that. I do. I love that. I just, I just am really. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I love this like super intimate time that I have with Aww. the Lord. I'm just like, I'm just loving that it's me and him. Of course, I still pray for my partner. I have, I feel confident that he's coming soon too. Mm -hmm. I do feel that from the Lord. But also, I recognize that the minute that I like my partner does come into my life things will shift not J jesus will always be priority number one to me but it like i have so much freedom to just spend as much time with him oh, right yeah, now it does shift and yeah. i'm embracing that you know like i recognize that once i have a partner it's like you know it's a whole nother person in the equation and i'm excited for that season but i'm kind of chilling i got some bros if you're <laughs> if you're ready I, I got a contract we can hey, listen sign. i am i am ready i'm listen. just waiting for the lord but i do know believe what, that it'll I'm happen dead. through community it'll i feel happen. like my followers are going to comment like caleb set me up they always are trying to <laughs> Dude, set, i i get, get a dm up. at least once a day that's with so a resume funny. literally the pictures resume credentials. that is so funny <laughs> yeah, yeah. wow oh my gosh i will say though i think this time is so valuable yeah time i'm with really the lord. like living in it I oh love my it. gosh yeah. and i think it just makes your marriage your relationship work so much better than having yeah. to teach a man or him teach you how to read the word of god it's like yeah. no i know yeah that's and awesome it's not men that i'm tough, like avoiding yeah. dates they just just men just haven't yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe god's just protecting you right now he's i really just like, believe hey. that i think he's like hey we're still not done with our qt time you know mm. and i'm like okay lord i love it so we'll see I'll love okay. Y'all. okay i want to ask you about manifestation okay <laughs> did you used to do manifestation so what are your thoughts on it uh it's funny because I, I i did a whole podcast episode about manifestation and uh how much I realized that that is 
so awful for our generation specifically. Mm -hmm. We are so in it. It's crazy. Um, But I didn't really... It's crazy because I feel like there were opportunities for me to, like, get into that stuff. And the Lord didn't let me get too deep in it. Like, I really believe that was him where he was. Because there was something about it that always made me go, you know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even really understand why it did. But there were some some friends in my life, um, some influences of of people. Like, I'll give an example. There was this guy that I was dating. Not my husband. (laughs) Literally (laughs) not my husband. Um... And uh, I was just, I was convinced though, because I was just living off my own feelings. And I was like, I need this to work. Like, mm-hmm. I want him and I need mm-hmm. him to be my person. And so I was talking to this girlfriend of mine who uh, is was very heavy in like manifestation and making your own reality and like making things happen in your life. And at the time, I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, so I was telling her about it. I literally remember exactly where I was. I was in my bathroom. I was still living in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I was telling her about it. And I was like, dude, I just really want this to work. Like, whatever. And she goes, well, we can literally make that happen right now. And I was like, okay, how? Mm. Bro, it's giving witchcraft. Ugh! Yeah. And even in that moment, I was like, be crap. I was like, this is not real. I, like, I wasn't sold that this could really happen. And honestly, I think the Lord was, like, really protecting me in that, too, because it didn't happen. Like, after we manifest, it didn't. But Mm -hmm. what's scary about manifestation is that the enemy will actually, like, deliver things so that people are hooked and they're in it. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh, this stuff works. And then they're, like, they're deep. And then then it gets dark, right? So I'm grateful that it didn't work. But, um, yeah, she was just, like, teaching me how to manifest it. And she's like, we could do it right now. And so we started doing our little freaking i don't know it's giving prayer but just like voodoo whatever (laughs) and i was like okay and then it didn't work and it crashed and burned so uh i was like this is so silly and i really wasn't sold on that stuff even like when it came to like um zodiac signs and stuff like i was like i was like dabbling in it just a a little bit but i really i never got deep in it what about like angel numbers i have one tattooed on my finger because i saw that yeah, I this is all BC Alley. Okay, I thought that said 666. I was oh like, my gosh. Are you gosh. kidding me? No, I would have literally got it removed so <laughs> I would be like, oh, we're going what? after this. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, no, I don't even know if I really fully understood angel numbers. I just was like, ooh, cute, magic, uh-huh. signs. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Allie. <laughs> Sparkles. Yeah. Dude, number one red flag in girls, guys will always say, if zodiac signs, if they're in that stuff, the moon. I have, I have my oh, Taurus no. on my arm. Yeah. If hey, but listen, like, it's Aries. a bull though. It could be anything. You're, yeah, you're a Texas person. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Manifestations, and it's an interesting topic because that is what is so true and hard. Is I've had, I've spoken out against it, and I've got a lot of flack for Whatever, it. Whatever, guys. A it's lot the of truth. Flack. You but, wonder why there's darkness. You wonder why you're having sleep paralysis. You wonder oh, why. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm getting sleep paralysis just because, like, I watched, I don't know, they, they just make excuses. Or, or I'm feel- babe, they, it could be all of it. It really Wait, could be. I, I don't mean to play devil's advocate, but what about manifesting causes sleep paralysis? Well, you're inviting No, I'm de- saying, like, what? Like, what's the like demonic spirit. Well, but what's, really the, what's, like, the biblical context for that? Like, to, well, like, back up you're saying. You're trying that. to play God. Like, you're not surrendering and saying, Lord, your will be done. It's like, I want this when my timing, I want to make this guy happen in my own power. Like you are trying to play God and your own timing. And that's yeah. not how God works. But I'm asking, how does that cause sleep paralysis? I'm going to oh, tell you. You yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. So am I saying that one plus one equals two? Like if you are manifesting, you are going to get sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. that doesn't happen for anyone. But I'm just using it as an example where if you are experiencing demonic encounters things like sleep paralysis awful nightmares like seeing scary things like feeling like there's things in the room like having that fear in your life it could be caused by plenty of things one of those doors is manifestation because if you are trying to manifest or make something happen in your life you have to channel a power in the spirit spirit realm and if you're not going to god there's only two ways you could go you could go to light or you could go to the darkness so if you're not acknowledging that god is real or jesus is real you are channeling something and it it's darkness and it's demonic so that's the open door it's literally just the invitation of manifesting trying to like it's witchcraft which the the bible literally i don't know where it is in the bible but it's like do not participate in this stuff because that is an open door to Mm -hmm. the enemy you know i think it's even watching horror films even having a horror film playing in your house like this sounds dramatic but it's not bro that's demonic mm-hmm. and you are that is an open door that is an invitation yeah. hello satan come on in yeah that's why Ooh, that's why i wasn't allowed to watch wizards waverly place going up. 
Wait, are you serious? Same. Same. Yeah. Wait, I watched it. Yeah. Same. I'm That's like, I gotta Because I didn't now. know. Uh, yeah. But honestly, y'all, yeah. like, it's kind of fun because I've ended up being able to teach even my parents about this stuff. Not in an arrogant way, but it's just like, I'm so intrigued with the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of Christians, like, especially when it comes to the darkness, they're like, mm. Yeah, they don't want to acknowledge it. Kind of like how you were saying with like mm-hmm. negative comments. It's like we can't acknowledge it, which I do think at times it's like we we shouldn't. But if we're not acknowledging the darkness, yeah. how do we know how to defend ourselves it, against it? Yeah, it's so true. It, it's funny. We believe it, this is what's crazy. Christians believe that a human died and rose again, came back to life, but it's out of the realm of possibility that there are demons or that there is hell, or that there is darkness, and that things on earth can exist in a yeah. very weird way. But it's funny, but we believe that a man died and rose again, but certain things like that, No, oh, why are we, Why are we limiting God? Right. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, or, literally, Jesus rose from the dead, so you don't think that demons are coming knocking at your door? Not to be oh, scared. Yeah. It's nothing to be afraid of, because also, if you read Scripture, God tells us over and over again that we literally hold his authority in us. Yep. That mm-hmm. same spirit that, that rose yep. Jesus from the freaking dead lives in us. So we have nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. But I feel like Christians forget that, and they're like, oh, gosh, if we acknowledge it too much, they're going to come after me harder. F- literally fight back mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. Hello? Yeah. You have the best weapon you could ever have. Amen. Like, we have nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think also people like the fun side of Christianity. Hope and love like, and, yay, and light, forgiveness money. and mercy and but money like, and blessings. No, there's some real mm-hmm. stuff, some real demonic spiritual forces that are coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And we should not be ignorant And we to that. are, we're not removing them. We're just pretending they're not there, but they're still there. If and anything, so you're think, giving them more power by being like, I'm just not going to acknowledge you. Yeah. Satan's like standing over there in the corner. He's like, great, I'll keep standing here as long totally. as she continues to ignore me. No, literally call him out in the name of Jesus and say, get out. Yeah. And I think people think it's like, either Christianity is this fluffy thing like, oh yeah, it's just all this love. Rainbows and butterflies. But you don't want to admit that there's a real dark side. And I think that's where it gets dangerous is people just want the good, but they want to forget about the bad. And I'm like, there are things that we have to rebuke, yeah. mm-hmm. whether that's generational curses or yes. sin or bondage or yes. things that like spells that have been cast over us yes. people or negative words or whatever. And so I think it's important for us to acknowledge yeah. that because then you're going to feel this thing like, why do I feel so heavy today? Why do I feel depressed? Why do I feel anxious? Why can't I sleep? Why am I waking up every night at three in the morning, the same freaking time, feeling heavy? What is that about? And it's like, you've got to look, what door did I leave open? What yeah. have I not rebuked? What sin have I not repented from? And, and I if know. if you don't know, ask God. Yeah, like, God will show you. He won't, like, you don't even realize that it could be because, you know. You're taking those shrooms because you've been told that it's it yep. brings you closer mm-hmm. to God, it you and peace it's like, like whatever. sometimes you just don't know. So that's why it's important to like, even if you're like, God, I actually have no idea. Like, why is this happening in my life? I thought all the doors were closed. Reveal it to me, and He will. Mm-hmm. He'll show you because yeah. He doesn't want that for you. Totally. He doesn't want you to live in like that fear or suffering, you know. And honestly, like. I don't know how controversial we're trying to get, but I wish more churches would talk about that stuff. Yeah. I feel like there's mm-hmm. so many churches and like mega churches that are really, really great for like, honestly, there were so many mega churches that I was listening to uh, that really did help me in the beginning of my journey. Sure. But it is so important to understand all aspects of just the reality that we're living in and the war that's going on in oh, the yeah. spiritual realm that we don't even see physically, but we feel it. Mm-hmm. We feel it and it exists. And so I feel like a lot of people are afraid to speak on that because they don't want to scare people away but like that's literally the bible oh, like yeah. it's it's all aspects well you then know? you're gonna have oppressed people in your church because you're not willing to address the demons or address the you darkness you gotta do it and or so sin, we address sin. Yes, sin we talk about this repentance. all the time like yeah i remember when i first started there were certain pastors i listened to as well and it made me feel so good really feel good oh and gosh, it, li- it lights you joy. up and you're like i'm ready to take on I the world date again and we're gonna make and money. then after a while i was like okay the bible literally says like okay let's have some like solid food now mm. like let's have some real stuff and so eventually churches have to teach the word yeah preach the word all sides the of truth it. is Even what the scary will set stuff. you free you know and so I think that's what we're missing out today. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, it's like it's sad because even churches have bills to pay and they're having to, you know, speak to an audience that gives money to them. And so, you, mm. you know, you it's easy to fall into that like fear mm-hmm. of man. kind yeah. of Because well, it's like, like, how are we going to stay afloat? Yeah. Even now, like I'm sitting here in this podcast and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is yeah. too controversial. People are going to hate me. Brands blah, 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 blah. Wanna... People are going to think I'm people brainwashed. People probably will not like this, though. But it's just but... like 
hopefully this sets we need to think about free. jesus too like there were plenty of people who literally mm-hmm. like cussed him out for what the, yeah. the stuff he said yeah. like i think cancel culture is coming to an end i think i think i pray it does because that's from the pits of hell over it th- i'm over it i think we're getting to a place to where you're seeing it with tons of podcasts now people are talking about whatever they want i think brands are kind of like cool like as mm-hmm. long as people watch it i don't care yeah and the minute you can get to a place i think you're doing a really good job of this like just being yourself is freedom yeah. and going, okay, people love me. If they hate me, if they accept me, great. If they don't, great. Yeah. I'm just going to live my life. Yeah. But Can I sh- be transparent? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I, have- March- I haven't even gotten a brand deal in like seven months. <gasps> yeah. That's no. okay. God's going <laughs> to No, bless. but it's okay. But I say that because like there is going to be seasons when if you're, if you feel led to be bold, which we all should with the Lord, you need to have so much trust that he's going to take care of you mm-hmm. for that obedience. So I'm sitting here not being like, oh, I haven't made any money. Like, yeah. I literally know that the Lord is going to provide. Yes. Amen. And sometimes there are going to be seasons where people don't want to work with you because of the stuff you said. But this is the gospel. Like, yeah. we have to speak it's the truth. It. That's what every like even Paul is like so, all of these people in the Bible who literally sacrificed their life like that sacrifice, you know. And so mm-hmm. even when it comes to the church, like if people don't donate to the church for a couple months, like you yeah. you just really need to cling more on to Jesus. Us then Amen. you know what I mean yeah at least what you're getting now is you're creating an organic space yeah. for authenticity and whatever income that comes out of that at least mm-hmm. it's real yeah and you've created something that's sustainable long term yeah well, and not built on a foundation of like lies are not really who you are yeah you know that's exhausting no I would not want to do that exhausting yeah yeah. yeah, that's so true. If it goes another seven months, I'll give we'll give you recommendations for a different agent, though. <laughs> hey, so, but if you're, because, like, really broke, Allie, we yeah. <laughs> one point, us, okay. I'll be honest, I'm doing the numbers. I've saw, I've seen your numbers, and um, you're eight, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> I want to represent you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So funny. God, I'm thanking you for your honesty, though. That's no, I had so to real. Say, I mean, I, people don't see that. No, they you do know? not. Like, see from creator to creator, I get you. Yeah. It can be scary. You're like, oh, my gosh. I'm feeling I'm it. No it happens. Money. But also, like, Jesus is worth it, so I don't care. Amen. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. Okay, another question I had for you is because you post – how many times do you post a day on TikTok? Like, oh, once, sometimes two times? No. I mean, okay. I, sometimes I – I feel like I post like maybe four or five times a week. Okay, because I think when I get on TikTok, it'll immediately push your video to me. So I'm like, dang, this goes on a roll. No, 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 babe. You're probably seeing something from like last week. Okay, and it's hard because TikTok doesn't show you the date. So I I never know. I'm like, when did you post this? I'm not posting that much. So how do you balance your personal relationship with Jesus and a public relationship online where you're helping people? Yeah. I struggle with this because... As you know, some things that God gives you are just meant for you. Yeah. And I think where I struggle sometimes being a quote unquote Christian influencer is not everything needs to be shared to the public. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people are like, I got a word from God. I need to share it to everybody. It's like, no, sometimes things are just mm, for you. Mm. How do you balance the online versus offline yeah. relationship? To be honest, um, if I did share every single thing that the Lord was teaching me in that moment or that day or that month, I probably would be posting like, two, three times a day, you Mm -hmm. know? But I feel like that's when it's really important to lean in on God for that discernment of like what you feel from him is going to change people's lives. Like the rest of my children need to know this and hear this versus Allie, this is just for you and me. You know what I mean? So honestly, I would never know if I went off of my own discernment, um, but I, I just feel it from God. Like there are times where I'm just like, crying in my prayer closet with him and I'm like I'm so grateful for this moment and I just know that it's just supposed to be for us you know honestly I feel like if I were to pick a percentage of how much of my faith I actually share online I'd say it's only like maybe 20 percent of Mm -hmm. like actually what Mm -hmm. I'm going through with Jesus and so um yeah I don't know I just I just feel that nudge from him like even if I'm like in my pajamas ugly crying I did it last night actually um (laughs) where I read a verse in Romans about just like how his love can literally never be taken from us Mm -hmm. and so that was a very intimate moment that I had with Jesus but I felt him be like you need to let my kids know that this Mm -hmm. is also for them too like this kind of love so it's really just the discernment it's really just like staying like with him and hearing him you know but I I do think it's important that more of your faith is with God than it is online because you don't ever want to get to the point. And I've never felt like while I'm in a moment with Jesus, I'm like, ooh, let me get my phone real quick. It's always after. It's always like after I have a moment with God that I'm like, I hear him be like, okay, you can share this now. You know what I mean? It's never like, 
I better prop my phone up. See, like, that's how I'm like, that gives me the ick. Have that, you, have you seen the TikTok? It's like Christian influencers be like, and it's like them setting down their phone and then playing Oceans. And like, then they're worshiping. No, literally, yes. I will vomit. I don't yes. ever want to be that. I do not ever so want to be that. Do you feel, do you not like it when people put you in a box now of you're a Christian influencer? I don't know. Is that what I'm called now? Probably. I don't know. They, they put, everyone likes labels. They put labels on everybody. So they I mean, I probably am a Christian influencer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like I to say care. I'm an influencer who's a Christian. Yeah. That's me. That's how I like to say it. Yeah. I don't care. But it is interesting because sometimes, if like. If there's a box I'm going to be put in, I guess it's that, I would want that one. Yeah, great. Check. That's a good box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's I will a, say, that's like, a nice boulder. Na- yeah. Name the movie. What? Look at that boulder. No that's idea. a nice, nice boulder. What is that, Shrek. Spongebob? Shrek. Oh. oh, I thought it was Spongebob. Look at that box. That's a nice box. <laughs> I like that. I'll go in that <laughs> box. Donkey. Be quiet, donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, it is, it, it, we're in an interesting time where, like, Christian influencers weren't a thing before. Bro, we're kind of getting is, cool, though. This is new. Now it's cool. We're not, like, it's taboo like, anymore. I feel, I feel this movement of influencers because I'm also seeing this though where God is literally saving people like me I'm just an example I've seen it I've been seeing it I don't know if you guys have noticed he is saving people who already have an influence and a following oh yeah I am seeing influencers who have like 7 million 12 million followers on TikTok and they're like so I've been reading my Bible and I'm like where did yeah. this come from um, I think revival is happening. Religion might be dying. Yeah, but Jesus is not. Holy Spirit is and alive. And that's what I've been saying. They were like, what do you think about organized religion? I was like, I think people don't want organized religion. They want Jesus. Jesus came They're to hungry for squash Jesus. that. Yeah. And so, I mean, I even Let's thought about go. you. I thought about you. I thought about Kat Von D. I thought about so many influencers yes. that I'm seeing that they're like, oh my gosh, Jesus is showing me all these things. Like, I can think of another girl I know in my life, an influencer who God's revealing who? himself to her. No, I'm seeing a lot of guys, especially like in the... Uh, the gym culture industry i'm mm-hmm. seeing a lot of just dudes on podcasts that like even joe rogan is talking about his like his yeah. faith and talking yeah. about jesus in certain ways and i don't know i think people are seeing what's happening to i think when we got uncomfortable with a virus and like the economy is I think tanking everyone's just sick of all the garbage and they want the real thing yeah or it's mm-hmm. like an, a, a feeling of man this this might all just come down this might all yeah. just burn yeah and none of this really matters, you know. It's okay, guys. A revival is happening. I really think it is. It and is. that's why I'm so excited it is. to be able to share. Like, no, God is on the move. People's yeah. eyes are being opened. People are mm. hungry. They are desperate. They're thirsty. They've been starving and, their yeah. whole life. I was. I was freaking starving. Yeah. Yeah. Spiritually, just Spiritually. like the, it, people don't want religion. Yeah. They want Jesus. Well, this has been so freaking fun. This has uh, been fun. Are we What done? time do you have to leave? It's what time is it? We do have Reddit on Reddit. Sister, we got like 20 more minutes. Right, cool. We got Reddit on Reddit. I got till one thirty. Let's do one thirty. Unless there's something else you want to ask. We need some. One forty. Okay. Wait, I'm let's having fun. About, let's talk about singleness really quick about that. Oh, go ahead, King. Yeah, go King. <laughs> like, these girls out here are dating dudes that I'm just like, what They're are a little you? Crusty. What are you doing? So, can you speak to the girls who are either dating someone that they shouldn't be dating? Yeah. Or even just the single girls. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Just be with Jesus, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For the love of God, just be with Jesus. No, but I really think that the biggest thing uh, that shifted for me with like n- no longer dating guys that just don't, that just are no good. They don't meet the requirements of what, I don't want to say requirements, but they just don't meet like what God wants for a marriage, you know, um, is honestly just asking him for those qualities and i think i've also even brought like the qualities of what i want in a man and so the minute that i that i see and i'm not i want to say this so gently because it's not like obviously everyone is flawed so i'm not saying you're supposed to find like a perfect man because that Mm -hmm. literally doesn't exist outside of jesus but be honest with god and let him be honest with you about what you truly need in a relationship Mm -hmm. and so if you're dating someone and you realize that there's a quality of him or there's a part of his lifestyle. I think the biggest thing is also lifestyle. Like oh, if yeah. he, if the way that he lives his life does not align with the way that you live your life with bringing God first, you know, like um, prioritizing quiet time with the Lord, like loving people. I think um, that is the biggest mistake that people, women make, I've made in my past mm-hmm. is is the, the feeling of like, oh, but uh, there's a potential. Yeah. I can change him. Or like the Lord will change him. Like I'll just stick around around it's like why would god introduce you to a man who i mean you're both a work in progress but he would want that the minute that you guys meet each other is the minute that you guys are supposed to meet each other and the versions you're supposed to be so if you guys are not equally yoked and it's not like giving the same 
God wouldn't do that to you. No. He wouldn't put you through that, like, because there's a little bit of stress with that. Yeah, you know he's not I mean? a God that, like, teases you. It's supposed you know, to be dangles peaceful stuff in front and, of like, you. make sense and just flow. Mm-hmm. And so if you're getting any other feelings other than peace, uh, it just it just it just flows simply like I, mm-hmm. I look at the way that God has provided just simply these friendships in my life and I'm like okay that was so God because it was so easy it was so out of the blue it was unexpected and I didn't even hardly have to work for it mm-hmm. it's just like happened you know so I don't know I don't know if that answered it's the question so but totally I, I think so many girls like they're trying to make things happen in their own and they're trying to search and they're on the dating apps and like I'm not against dating apps I don't prefer that I don't I literally felt so much conviction about yeah. that I, I, I like felt like I was trying to put like, things in my own yeah. power and I know that God can still use things like that to introduce people but also from a woman's perspective I have completely let go of the feeling of being like am I doing enough am I texting him yeah. enough am I saying enough am I initiating enough it's like sister no you are the woman he is the man he is going to pursue you not in like a lazy way where it's like great i don't have to do anything but it's like i don't want to have to fight for a man to Mm-mm, pursue me like, i want him to pursue have me to like force yourself in his way or put yourself out there or and do i've something done and that same it's exhausting and it does not work and it doesn't work by the way because yeah. they none of them did so i feel like it's the moment when you surrender it's and surrender you let go and you say god not my timing, not my will. Like literally, I want your plan, your best for me, and you I stop force caring. It. Yeah, that's usually when God's like, okay, she's ready. She's ready now. <laughs> yeah, sure. spread your wings, little girl. Right. Ha- happy International Women's Day, guys. <gasps> it is go it girls. Is. Go us. <laughs> when is International Man's Day? Dude, that's every day. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Shut it right now. Oh man, I actually made a post about this today on my Instagram story, and I feel like women are so mean to each other. Yeah. Why do you think sure. that is? Uh, We're the just enemy. jealous. Enemy. We're divisive. Oh, I'm like, horrible. can we quit yeah. this? Because, because, because the enemy knows how powerful women are together. Mm-hmm. I believe that, and so he hates. He, the enemy hates when any of God's children are unified in any way. He mm-hmm. hates marriage. He hates community. He hates women coming together. He hates men coming together. It's like I really believe that that is just a narrative that's that's in girl world because of the enemy, like the gossip, the slander, the comparison, um, all of it. It's mm-hmm. all Satan coded. You know what I mean? So um, that's been a really refreshing thing that I've seen even in the friendships that I have with women now is that um and I've even found myself like falling into those insecurities of comparing myself to other people Mm and um I think even in the Christian space like we really do let the enemy just quietly put behind our heads like uh a competitive oh yeah between podcasts or or whatever it is music like artists books bro we're all on the same mission and we should all be Mm -hmm. supporting each other and unifying together as this like huge flame to light the world you know oh yeah and so um it's really cool because i I feel god debunking all of that 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 just does not exist and as long as you have christ in your heart and you just let him like nudge you and remind you that that is straight from satan like oh gosh it's but it's it's real like it's really Mm -hmm. because even me now i still am like gosh but she's this and i'm only this it's like ew in the name of jesus literally ew yeah like it's not real gosh that is something so worth fighting for is removing those insecurities or the jealousy or the comparison it's it's ugly it really is and it does nobody good, you no. know, because you're, you're not living in peace, bitter towards somebody or they're bitter towards you and you're trying to level up. And I feel like when you aren't in these godly, uplifting, encouraging friendships, you're used to kind of the toxicity, the gossip, the slander, you picking on your friend, putting them down. And you're just so conditioned to that. You're yeah. like, oh, yeah, maybe this is what friends do. Yeah. And then you see the other side, even with like dating or whatever, yeah. you're like. This is what I could have had. Yeah. A friend that prays over me, that encourages me, that believes the best I've in me. I've never experienced that. That I can anything. call and check up on me. Whoa. Yeah. It's so much better. Oh it's my so gosh. It's so much better. It's refreshing. And I feel like um, that is something that I'm still actively living in is like just that shock of being like, wait, you guys are like, you actually Ooh. care and love about me mm-hmm. and you want to freaking pray on yeah. me. And um, it's really encouraging too. Like yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's just, I love Christians. What the heck? They're awesome. <laughs> I really do. Okay. I was talking or earlier. You said something about um, hate online. Okay. Do you get a lot? I get do some. Do you see it? Do you, how do you handle it? Well, yeah. So kind of like what we were saying. Did we th- talk about that? Not really. We, we talked about. You briefly mentioned some hate, but we didn't talk about how you ha- really handle it. Okay. And, right. Um, so the biggest thing for me is like, I, we did kind of touch on this, but I think we weren't, we weren't filming yet. Yeah, it was before. Um, is not scrolling in my comment section, to be honest, because, uh, as much as there, 
it does bum me out because I know there's a lot of positivity in the comment section. I know there's more than there is negative, but I have learned and I have received the conviction from the Lord where he's like, okay, well, then you're just not scrolling the comment section anymore that I could read 20 positive comments. Mm -hmm. And then there's that one that's like, ew, LOL, you're a joke. And now I'm sad and my tummy hurts and you're up at 3am. I am a joke. (laughs) And so, um, I think honestly, one of the biggest things that the Lord has been teaching me too, he teaches me so much every day, oh my gosh, is um, yeah, just having that self-control and like um, discipline of being like, all right, I'm just gonna put this out in the world. I'm gonna read the few first comments of like my mutuals of people that I'm friends with. And then from there, we're not reading it because I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna put myself in a position for the enemy to attack me. Yeah. Like if I can avoid putting myself in a position to be vulnerable for the enemy to throw daggers at me, I'm not even going to go there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I have to say that the hate comments are not as heavy as, like, obviously there's so much more positivity that's coming my way, but it's unfortunate that that's, like, the way our brains operate, though. We see one awful comment and we're like, and you rethink everything. 400 years ago, if your neighbor said what some of these people say, you're going to war, like, immediately. Yeah. And so it's it's good that you're not. 400 years ago, huh? Dude. 400 years ago. You Can't start talking. Where did you read that? Start talking sheesh. Back in the day, our tribes are fighting. That's true. You think, you think about all the wars? That's true. They didn't. They just a lot. randomly stopped. Well, kind of. We're in Russia, Ukraine. First actually, off, Jesus, they haven't. You're stopped. not really Why are we fighting yeah, like true. that. Why yeah. are we fighting like that? The enemy will always be, you know, making people hate each other. <laughs> yeah. I know. But the, the TikTok comments, ruthless. Yeah, for sure. Ruth. It's always user six. I was two, just two, three, gonna four, say four. it's always the users. <laughs> it's like, the anonymous show your name and face. I'm like, okay, you got a backup count. I, I see you, Karen. But sometimes yeah. they're I know what you're doing. Too, though. <laughs> sometimes it be your own friend. <laughs> so Dude, sometimes I run to the comments and Dude. I'm like, yes. No, people are so witty. Yeah. Like sometimes, sometimes I respond and he gets mad at me. I'm like, what? <laughs> I comment back. I'm like, oh, I like. I'm like, I, I'll yeah. say, guys, like in the it. beginning of my season, I would justify, I, I, I would comment back to hateful things, but I'd be like, literally praying for you, God bless you, and I meant it, but I felt the conviction from the Lord to be like, you don't need to acknowledge these people mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. It's giving giving your pearls to pigs. Like, mm, don't do them. that. Like, <laughs> I know you're trying to bless people, <laughs> but also. I'm not calling them pigs. This is scripture. I'm talking about <laughs> this is scripture. Hey, this is, yep, this but is if biblical. they don't recognize the value in what you're giving them, you are only like hurting yourself. Yeah. You know, again, that's why discernment is really important too, because totally. there are some comments where I feel like they're being hateful, but I'm like, ooh, but I think they need to hear this word. Like, totally. You know, so, but then yeah, there's the people Bible who are just says, hateful and they don't want to hear you at all. And it, that's, that's yeah. the pig part where it's like, okay, they don't even want to hear you. So what's the point? You know, well, yeah, the Bible says there's a time to speak and a time to be quiet. And it's having discernment on, should I comment back? Should I just not like this person even know me? Let it go. Let it delete. Go. Whatever. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we close out every episode with a segment called Reddit on Reddit. We normally have a sparkle sound effect, and we don't have that here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna read a story. We're gonna react to it, and I'd love to get all of our thoughts on this. It's a little long, so I'll try to condense you have it. Nine minutes. Guys, we are literally fine. It's 126. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Great. Okay. I can okay. leave here by like 140 at the latest. All right. Bet. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're we got this. Okay. So this is a guy asking this to us. Am I overreacting over how my boy... Wait, no. This is a girl. Girl ask... uh, Okay, I'm going to start this over. Yeah. This is a girl asking this question. Am I, I'm a 22 female, overreacting over how my boyfriend compliments his female friends? I and my boyfriend have different viewpoints when it comes to complimenting others. I've always felt uncomfortable and weird when I hear my boyfriend tell his female friends that they look attractive. He says, hey, you look attractive today. When he notices they've done their makeup, changed their hairstyle, also tells them you look great today. I vocalized this past week how I felt about the situation. I first began with, hey, I would appreciate it if you wouldn't tell me that your female friends, that they, that they look attractive. It's a bit weird. He started to get a bit defensive, saying they are extreme, that I'm extremely insecure. Okay. And that I simply wanted to boost their confidence. They'd rather, you get what okay. I'm saying. He, he's, def- he's deflecting. Um, she's Gaslight. frustrated. <laughs> He cleared up with one of them as a friend he took out. Wait, he cleared it up with one of them. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, what's our, what's our take on this? Okay. It's, we get the point of this. start? Go ahead. Okay, there's a difference. There's a difference between, you know, you... Wait, hold on, can I say something? Sure. At the bottom, he says, he stated, the way I phrased it was really controlling, and he does not want to be controlled. He states that this could have been avoided if I communicated differently. Did I overreact over the word attractive? Aww. No. This poor I, I girl. Wanna I want I know. I'm like, you poor he thing. Doesn't, awful. He doesn't. One, he's toxic. Two, he doesn't like you. 
Because no guy Gee. does this mm. who is genuinely afraid of losing the relationship. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a difference between you walking in and going, the fit's fire. Yeah, you literally said something about the way yeah. I look, yeah, but it totally. wasn't like you were like, Allie, you look beautiful. Yeah, I wasn't like, yeah. oh, what the oh my heck, God, weirdo? He's obsessed with her. Right? I yeah. want Janine to feel like the only girl in the room, no matter where I'm at. No matter who team. walks in, no matter... Like, if a girl walks in and Janine, because you're, I remember one time you were like, oh, I'm feeling insecure right now. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, immediately, like, okay, could I have done something better? To, she's like, no, like, you always make me feel super confident. And that should be the goal, no matter if your girl's being crazy or not. That should be the goal. If, like, that's the person you're with, you need to make her feel like she is the only girl in the room. That's a free gift you can yeah. pass on. Amen. That's a bar right there, baby. That's a man. Yeah, I feel like, it's true. um, this man is, it sounds sad, but I feel like if he's like looking, wa has wandering he eyes, know what he wants. he's gonna wander the rest of his life. Yep. He's gonna wander, look at pornography or whatever else, yep. and he's looking for affirmation somehow. And I feel like, yeah, you should feel like the absolute queen and yeah. goddess in this man's eyes. Yeah. yeah. So I feel sad for her. And I don't disagree that those types of compliments are inappropriate. Yeah. It is inappropriate. There is a difference between being like, you look nice today, you know, for, as a friend to friend, whatever. Um, and then saying, like, pointing out specifics, like, you look attractive or your right. makeup or your hair. Like, it's just like, yeah. I don't know. It just feels really inappropriate. And I think that, if anything, we can just validate her in those feelings and she's not crazy. And I don't know. Sometimes I feel like even, you know, if you feel like you're doubting yourself, it's probably red flag, too. Like, if he's making you feel like, gosh, am I crazy? Am mm, I this? Am I totally. that? That's not a good sign. Because I've felt that way, and those relationships were extremely toxic. And I think the way that he's deflecting is, like, he doesn't want to be told what to do. He mm -hmm. doesn't. He definitely doesn't value your feelings, because if he did, he would have never reacted that oh, way. Yeah. He would have been like, I feel awful that I'm making you feel this way. I love you before any of these other women, and I want you to feel comfortable. I'm so sorry I did that. Bro, just own up to, yeah. like, if you really cared about her feelings. If he had said that, it would have been like, oh, great. Okay, we're good. But he didn't. <laughs> no, I've, I've he seen, told you you were nuts. Yeah. That's so mean. I've seen girls do this a lot, though, with other guys. Like, I've, I have I have a specific story. When you and I were with a group and this girl in front of her boyfriend was uh -oh. complimenting me and, like, uh -oh. going, you should, you should follow his workout plan. It was something oh my gosh. of the vicinity, but it's, like, been happening multiple times. Yeah. And I'm like, no, like, you just don't do don't that. Don't do yeah. that. No, you because then stripping. his confidence is oh. like, like <laughs> yeah, it's, tanks. And then now he has to overcompensate, and now he has to compare. like compare. Okay. It also causes comparison. Or for a girl, you see him do that to another girl, and you're like, but you didn't compliment me today. You're like, am I not attractive? Did I? Should I have cut my hair? Should yeah. I have, like? That's yeah. what would go in my head. And well, I and I'd like, be watching how many times he's looking over at her. Like, bro, I would be like, oh, so yeah. insecure. I'm like, you're in love with her, aren't you? That's awful. Bye. That's such an icky <laughs> feeling. Ugh, I hate yeah, that. Yeah, if you for feel her. crazy, it's like I always want to validate girls. Like, you're not crazy. Like, he's making you feel like that, and it depends on the situation of the totally. Course. Yeah, but I feel like no man should make you feel like that. No, so. and if anything. If you do, if he does make you feel that way, I think she did the right thing by communicating oh, it yeah. to him. Oh, yeah, and she did a very mature way yeah, as well. Yeah, but it's also the response, like the way that he responds to you. If you bring this to him and he really didn't realize that what he was doing was like inappropriate or maybe it came off in a way that made you uncomfortable, I think the way he reciprocates and then moves forward from there too is really important. You know, mm -hmm. if he's hearing you out, validating you, saying, hey, I'm so sorry, I love you, I'm here for you, and then it doesn't happen anymore, slay. Right. You know? Period. That's true. That's what okay. Well, that was today's episode. Allie, Let's you go. dropped some bombs today. today. That oh, was so goodness. fun. Yeah, was Everyone great. go follow her. She's a light. She's a joy. She mm -hmm. is bringing daily Aww. blessings and encouragement on TikTok Thank and so everywhere much. else. Your podcast, yeah. Coffee with Christ. Christ with coffee on Christ ice. Christ with coffee on ice. <laughs> that's really what it was. <laughs> it is Christ and coffee. Coffee and Christ, you yeah, know. You know we do it changeable. Yeah. Thank you, Christ, so this much. Was so fun. This I was loved fun. this. We have to do it again. Wait, Amen. Genuinely. We said this la We said this yesterday. What? This is my favorite favorite podcast we've done yet together. <gasps> we've been loving the in person. We tried virtual. Yeah. I hate virtual. No, I virtual. honestly, guys, I don't ever want to do virtual for We're mine done. either. No. I'm gonna make like in person happen at all costs yeah. because it's just better. It's so much better. You get to flow better. Yeah. So I also, yeah. thank you for driving over here, making this happen. Oh, also, funny. how dare the brands not work with this girl? Oh please! If you're a brand you watching <laughs> this. We're gonna, we're gonna. Yeah. I'm, I'm going out there this week. I'm gonna. He's gonna start hit being your agent. He's so gonna start pitching I, for I you. I want 95 percent of everything I bring in. <laughs> he says I'm gonna make you money, but mostly <laughs> for me. <laughs> you get five percent. Please. Hey, if they're if they're big, 
I'll take the part. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, who does she remind me of? Do I remind you of someone? There's someone on TikTok that goes, oh, a lot. <gasps> who is it? Probably me. <gasps> yes, but no, there's another person. Oh, I'll, think, I'll tell you offline. I can't remember the name. Okay. There's a person specifically that goes, I'm trying to think. On TikTok, and you did it, and I was like, oh my God, who is it? Maybe I got it from her. I don't know who it could be. <laughs> oh, funny. anyways, you guys, go follow Allie. This was an awesome episode. If you loved it, please share, tag us, we'll repost, we'll comment back. Mm -hmm. We pray this was a blessing, and don't yes. hate us too much for the, the tea and the truth that we dropped. Yeah, yeah, just blame it on Jesus, not yeah. us. <laughs> We're just the messengers. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And honestly, really, the encouragement really is at the end of the day. Read the word of God. Yeah. It'll change your life. It really was. We've seen it transform my life, her life, yeah. Caleb's life, mm -hmm. and it can transform yours too. And even if maybe you're not ready to hear some of these things or they, you know, they feel uncomfortable, um, we pray that you'll just pray through and ask the Lord to be the one that reveals it to you mm -hmm. or convicts you or calls you higher. Really, it's ultimately the Lord's job to change you not us and so we yeah. pray we can just be a blessing and thanks for listening you guys we love you guys love and you. see you next week on another episode of happy and healthy but until then stay happy and healthy bye guys bye guys bye. Oh, that that's so fire y'all